Hi again and welcome to lesson 7 of Android App Development Training Course. Today, you will learn how to create custom styles and apply it to your views. You'll understand the light and dark theme variations and learn how to modify colors and incorporate custom styles to your theme. You'll also learn how to create landscape variations of your activities XML layout file so that it adjusts to different orientations. A visually appealing app is a result of having a good user interface design. An excellent user interface will create an instant attraction to your app and is therefore vital to get it right, since this is where the success of your app begins. Styles and themes on Android allow you to separate the details of your app design from the UI structure and behavior, similar to style sheets in a web design. A style is a collection of attributes that specify the appearance for a single view, such as font color, font size, background color, and so on. A theme, on the other hand, is a collection of styles and attributes that is applied to the entire app, activity, or view hierarchy, and not just an individual view. When you apply a theme, every view in the app or activity applies each of the theme's attributes that it supports. Themes can also apply styles to non-view elements such as the status bars and window background. Themes and styles have many similarities, but they are used for different purposes. They have the same basic structure such as a key-value pair which maps attributes to resources. To understand these concepts, consider the following illustration. For this demonstration, I'll create an empty project and name it Styles and Themes. I'll modify some of the attributes of this text view. And then, I'll add several view components here in our layout such as buttons, switch, sick bar, and a floating action button with icon in it. If you're following along, you don't have to do or use exactly the same view components as I use here in my layout. We will not be working with the Kotlin activity file of this project anyway, but rather, we will work with pure XML files to customize our styles and themes. Feel free to add any view components in your layout as you please. I'll run my app and see how it looks in the emulator. In here, you can see the components that I have added. You can see the sick bar, the switch, the floating action button with mail icon in it, and the three buttons. Android provides a variety of ways to set attributes throughout your Android app. For example, you can set attributes directly in a layout, you can apply a style to a view, or you can apply a theme to a layout and you can even set attributes programmatically. Say this button. If I don't want this default background color and shape that my app theme uses by default, I can simply change it by clicking its background tint attribute, I can choose any custom color, or I can select one from my existing color resources. By default, my application has seven predefined colors to choose from. Black, three shades of purple, two shades of teal, and then white. I'll choose Teal 200. And then, I'll set the corner radius to 20 dp to make this button's corner to be round. I'll also adjust the text size and make it bigger, say 18 dp. But what happens if you want to apply the same set of attributes to the rest of the buttons? Well, it is not very efficient to do it one by one. Also. If you decide later to modify one of the attributes, then you'll have to set and apply the same value to the remaining buttons. And if you want a consistent look and feel of your app, your toolbar and window background must jibe with these view components as well. When you create a project in Android Studio, it applies a material design theme to your app by default, as defined in your project's themes or styles.xml. This style extends a theme from the support library and includes overrides for color attributes that are used by key UI elements, so you can quickly customize your app's color design by updating the provided colors. 
I am not a UI designer, and my color preferences may not be the same as yours. So, if you're new to mixing colors that match your Android app, you could benefit from this website, materialpalette.com. In here, you can select any two color combination, and this website automatically generates a palette preview for you to see how your app will look like using these colors. Your palette will consist of eight different colors, such as dark primary color, primary color, color accent, and so on. You can try to mix and match according to your taste. Mine, I'll use this teal and orange combination. And when you click on the corresponding color on this generated palette, the equivalent hex value is copied to your clipboard. If you want this entire palette, you can click download and choose the XML format. You can open it using any text editing tools. So, I'll copy these color definitions. And in the XML layout of this button, where I modified the background tint earlier, I'll do Ctrl and click the link. And this opens the colors.xml file. We can locate this file in the Project Explorer under res values directory. You can place here as many colors as you want. And what I'm going to do is, I'll paste everything here. And in the themes directory, you'll see here two files, the themes.xml and themes.xml night. I'll open both files so that you can see the difference. And both look the same, except for some color assignment. The question is, why do we need two? If we take a look at the layout file and click this preview toolbar, you can change this night mode to night and see how your app looks like when the user configures his or her smartphone using this dark mode. Some users prefer night or dark mode when they use their smartphones in dark environment. Notice how the view components adjust their color slightly to compensate the black background. I'll change it back to light mode. And this themes.xml is the one responsible for all the color assignment that you see in this layout. I'll do some modifications here. Instead of using the default purple 500 as the color primary, I'll use the primary color in my color resource. In the color primary variant, I'll change this to primary dark. Then, I'll leave the color on primary to be white, as this will stand out on darker background colors like this primary and primary dark colors. In the color secondary, I'll use the accent color which is orange. On the secondary variant, I'll use the same color accent as well. And then, I'll change this color on secondary to be white as well. If we take a look at our layout, you'll notice the initial change in color of your views. Now, let's run the app to see how this modified theme looks like in our emulator. See how the sick bar, the switch, and the floating action button use the same accent color of orange? The icon is white, since I replaced the color on secondary to be white. The buttons as well as the entire appearance of your app is now teal and white combination. As we set in the color primary, color primary variant, and color on primary attributes. The only view component here that looks different is this button. That is because I have modified its specific attributes explicitly earlier. Aside from changing the colors in your theme, you may also want to create custom styles that can be used or shared by several view components in your app. Like this button for example. To create a style, simply add a style element with a name that uniquely identifies the style. I'll call it my button. And then, add an item element for each style attribute that you want to define. The name in each item specifies an attribute you would otherwise use as an XML attribute in your layout. Say, background tint attribute. And then, the value in the item element is the value for this attribute. Say, color accent. You can set as many attributes as you want.
Now, you use this style and apply it to a button. Instead of specifying these attributes here, I'll delete it. Notice that this button has now the appearance, same as with the other buttons that use the default style. To apply our custom style, simply assign it here like this. If we want another button to use the same style, I'll do the same thing. See how easy it is to apply style to multiple view components in your layout, so that later if we decided to change some of its attributes, like the background tint for example, we don't have to do it here individually for each button. Simply change it in the style and all the buttons that use it will be affected right away. So now, what if we want this custom style to be part of our default theme, such that if we drag another button to this layout, it should automatically apply this custom style instead of setting its style manually. We can do this in the themes.xml. I'll add an item element and set the material button style to this custom style my button. When using your own style like this, you should always extend an existing style from the framework or support library so that you maintain compatibility with platform UI styles. We can extend a style by using the parent attribute, so I'll extend from the widget.materialcomponents.button, and that's it. Now, you'll notice that all the buttons will use this style by default. Let me add another button, and there you go. Since we use this my button style as the default, I no longer need this line of code here. Take note that you are not limited to creating only one style. For example, what if I want to have two different button styles? I'll duplicate this code block and change the name of this to other button. I'll get rid of this text all caps attribute and change the corner radius to 10 dp. I'll also remove this background tint. And then, instead of using a simple button, I'll make it outline button. This removes the background color of this button. So I'll change the text color and set it to primary dark so that we can see the text. Now, in my XML layout, I can choose any buttons here that will use this style. I'll copy these two custom button styles and paste it here in the night themes.xml. I'll also copy this item and paste it here. Then I'll change the color primary and set it to primary light. And this one to primary dark. Then the secondary color. I'll use the accent color and I'll set this to white as well. Now let's check it. Actually, I don't want this accent color of orange for my buttons in my dark mode. Also, the text in my outline buttons is a bit dark. So I'll customize this button style for night mode. I'll remove the background tint. I'll change the other button's text color to primary light as well as the text color of this to black. 
Let's take a look again in the emulator. Now, the text is a lot easier to read, not too much color in it. I'll switch it back to light theme. Aside from the light theme and the dark theme that you need to consider when designing a user interface in Android, you also need to consider the change in device orientation. You could have a design that looks good in portrait orientation but looks awful in landscape orientation. I'll change this preview to landscape. And if you're not satisfied with the layout of your app in landscape orientation, or you just want to modify the landscape layout to be totally different from that of the portrait, you can create a landscape variation of this. And when you do this, Android Studio creates a separate file for the landscape version of your activity. Suppose that I don't want this floating action button to appear above these buttons, so I'll delete these constraints. And place this horizontally aligned with these buttons. Also, I want these two buttons to align horizontally as well. Now, I'll run this app and see how it looks. This is how it looks in portrait. And when I change the device orientation to landscape, you see a different layout being displayed. I'll check the night mode. And then switch it back to portrait again. As a challenge, try to modify your previous calculator app by applying styles and themes to change the look and feel of your app. You can use any color that you desire. It doesn't need to look exactly like this. Your app should also support two different layouts so that it includes more operations like in a scientific calculator when switched to landscape orientation. It should also support the dark theme for both the portrait and landscape orientation. Don't worry, you don't have to provide the functionality for the additional math operations included in the landscape variation of this layout. Simply just the UI design. And again, thanks for watching. If you learned something of value here, Please click the like and subscribe button for more programming tutorials. This is Joy Edgo and hope to see you in the next video lecture.